Hi everyone, I am Lady Stars of Fire. My real name is Michelle Espinosa, and this is the weekly healing messages for March 19th through the 26th. This is going to be a big week, but this is that kind of week where balance is found. And balance isn't always found softly. Balance isn't always found easily. A lot of times when we come into that middle ground, we have a lot of that disturbing energy that has to lift so that balance can be created first. So this is going to be one of those weeks where you want to tread gently where you go. The deer does show up to remind us and has been showing up all week to remind us you cannot push others into doing what you want. You can only gently nudge them in the right direction. However, it is all about gentle strength right now. Now, we have so much going on this week. I'm going to try to speed it up like I always try <laughs> and get as much out there. Uh, I'm going to give you the runes. I'm going to give you what Spirit says and the astrology. But the sun is moving into Aries this week, and that has a lot to do with it because we also have the spring equinox taking place. That has to do basically with the sun being in alignment with the equator which speaks to us again of balance, of the middle ground, and of rebirthing in our earth energies. So that has a lot to do with what's going on this week. Plus, Mercury is about to go retrograde also in Aries. And Mercury has been in shadow for the last week and a half. And until it goes retrograde, it will still be in shadow up until Thursday. So it is bringing up those dark energies. Last week, I swear... At least on my side, I mean, things were went well, but the energy just felt <laughs> to me. It just felt like <laughs> all over everything. Like just all of that stuff was rising and it's rising though for a purpose. It's rising to help us find what we need to find so that we can make that middle ground, that balance happen so we can move forward in a positive way that always happens when mercury goes retrograde i'm going to come back for the astrology but remember with mercury being what's going retrograde this week that talks to you about your shadow communication versus when it turns inward it's going to be speaking to you about your inward communication talking to yourself which also is going to bring up dreams one of the easiest ways for your soul to speak to you, or spirit even, especially if you're not a medium, is through your dreams. So you might be having some really funky dreams, and it's your your soul's way, your self's way of working out some of that information. Even if you don't understand your dream, your higher self does. Now, um, I don't have the runes pulled in front of me. I just wrote down um, what they were for this week. So you can always go back and check my website. You can check my Facebook page, Twitter, any of my social media places. If you don't know what the runes are, which will give you a more in-depth meaning of what the runes that I'm going to be giving you for this week mean. So you can see how that also works within your life. Because I am given Hagulas. I'm given kind of like two different readings. Um, I'm given Hagulas and Jera. And Hagulas speaks to us of the controlled crisis. It's called hailstorm and crisis. But it's the controlled crisis leading to completion. It's for the changes to be made. We're also being given Jera, which speaks to us of timing, cycles, and seasonal changes, as well as dealing with the external. So this is the energy that's coming in. It's like that that vibrating energy that's going to be shifting to a more positive, but it has to lift that darker stuff up, especially with Mercury getting ready to go rec retrograde before it starts to make it better. Um... And then we're given Tawaz, which speaks to us of, well, Tawaz and Iwaz. Awaz are um, coming in also as a team. Tawaz is social order, social discipline, social law and justice. It speaks to us of needing to approach these areas of our life with a seasonal approach. But Awaz speaks to us of the need of teamwork and give and take and working in harmony in order for this to come forward in positive ways for us this week. Now, last week I did say that the spirit guide that I was being given was the donkey, which speaks to us of 
bringing to our attentions also the burdens that we have to carry, that we're responsible for, that we have to deal with, and how to do this in positive healing ways, knowing that the donkey can be very stubborn, but the donkey is stubborn because the donkey knows what it can and cannot do, and it will not be made to do what it can't do. And we are still feeling these energies of the donkey, even though, like I said, the spirit guide that's coming through animal level is the deer this week. The donkey is still in that energy, though, reminding us of our burdens and what we can and can't do and being realistic with ourselves. <clears throat> so that we can move forward in positive ways. That also is some of that dark energy coming up. But with that being said, spirit is directing me to the fact of our soul, our spirit itself right now, happens to be in the energy of fire. They're giving me the ram now that goes with this because I am just seeing horns everywhere, basically. That's what threw me off at first because I didn't know if I was dealing with just the deer or if the deer was part of it and it's sending us in different directions the deer is reminding us to move gently to tread gently over the waters as we are bringing this healing up and about basically that there is gentle strength there but we are being told by spirit individually our spirit our soul fire is kind of in the fire energy right now with ram and in that Aries sign. And when I come back to um, the astrology, this will make more sense. I'm also being told, don't misunderstand though. Even though our souls, the way we are looking at things, are coming into that spiritual fire energy, the earth itself happens to be moving in an earth energy, more or less. And this has to do with fertility and rebirthing. So you want to remember, you want to work with earth's energies, or it will work against you when you're trying to manifest. So you need to remember you're adding spirit and earth energies together. However, do not forget Jupiter always has his hand in everything. And Jupiter is in water in Scorpio. So that is bringing a healing through the spirit and through the earth's fertility and growth for our rebirthing of our energies of working this together. I am being shown plenty of the horned gods and that goes with the fertility of the earth energy for the rebirthing of spring, of the rebirthing of the spring equinox and whatnot. So this is bringing that energy up, like I said, within that fire energy, but we have to remember the earth itself is in the earth energy right now. So it's very important to work with the two of them and understand that Jupiter behind it is the magnet, is the magnifier that's bringing the healing up up out of your denials basically so that it can start to be created i am being given a lot of pink pale blues and um purple energies this week which has to do with sensitivity has to do with courage and tranquility but it also has to do with using your spiritual energy and or and or are you in need of getting into your spiritual energy is what i'm being given now I am being reminded as I move any further into what Spirit is trying to direct us for this week is with us knowing how the energies are working, like I just explained before I go back into the full astrology, is we are reminded that time only exists for us because we see it within our third dimensional self, which is the physical world. We see the past, the present, and the future to come. We know it. We feel it. We see ourselves grow older. We know we're in the present right now, which is the now, which is the only important part. Because spirit reminds us that it's, it's like a burrito that overlaps. You cannot have the future if you did not have the past. And the past cannot create the future if there is no now. It is a never-ending thing. Your third dimensional self will speak to your future and to your past. So the now is all that matters. 
One cannot exist without the other. Therefore, they do overlap, even though in the third dimensional world, we don't necessarily feel it or see it that way. Once, and once we move into those higher dimensions, we can understand what I'm speaking about better. And I'm saying this because the now is all that matters. But time is nothing more than an, obstac an optical illusion is what spirit is saying if you can get in the grasp of understanding time is an optical illusion that lasts within the third dimensional world then you can start to really work on your proper manifestation because your proper manifestation comes from your truth of what you know what you believe what you feel is your truth of your now so if you are in the truth of your now is telling you that all of these things are wrong that you have all these obstacles in front of you that all of these situations are happening that's because of that third dimensional world messing with your optical time okay with what it is you see and this is what's causing that manifestation to slow down you have to know you have to believe it but if you're talking yourself into believing it because you truly believe in the obstacles remember manifestation is part of your consciousness and your unconsciousness and if you believe in your unconsciousness more then your manifestation will slow down because your unconsciousness is stronger than your consciousness this part of what this whole year is about rising that unconsciousness to a higher vibrational level because you have to be vibrating at the frequency that you want your manifestation to take place in this is why it's key to remember it's just the third dimensional world doing its job by playing its trick on you get out of that thinking get into that higher vibration of I know I'm a higher vibrational being I know that this is this and I know that this is going to happen and I know that this is going to happen if you stay in the doubt the doubt will slow it all down this is why I always say Archangel Metatron or Metatron has always said to me take the doubt out now with that being said like I said, it's all about your vibrational vibrational frequency that is what brings in the positive manifestation versus the negative. And another thing I'm being reminded of, people misunderstand. They think if they work really hard at being positive, their manifestation will work. They think if they, you know, they they want to believe in the manifestation so therefore it will work okay manifestation also does not work with a gold star system you don't get you don't get extra credit for good behavior it doesn't work like this it is not a reward system manifestation works with your vibrational energy so if you're trying to do the good thing if you're trying to do the right thing but you're soulfully don't want to your vibration is still gonna pull that down it has nothing to do with a no rewards system. It's not getting extra credit. Your manifestation doesn't work for extra credit. You can do a million things that are right for the wrong reason and soulfully you already know that you're fighting yourself on that. And that is a healing that you need to work with to create that healing so that the proper manifestation can come. Remember, your unconscious and your conscious together create that manifestation so it's something that that vibrational frequency has to work with not an a rewards system you can get a million gold gold star points for good behavior for doing the right thing but soulfully if you don't believe in what it is you're doing that manifestation still will not work basically is what they're telling me and I'm being told because of those burdens and that donkey energy and everything that was coming in through that shadow energy from mercury as it gets ready to shift because this is a very important retrograde for mercury um for those people who are having a hard time or really having a hard time I'm being reminded because what I'm sh being shown is the heavens and 
And when I'm shown it, typically it's reminded me that we are not alone. We are being watched. We are being helped and guided. However, when we feel like we are alone, that is part of our third dimensional world of feeling the separation. But also, it's kind of like a child when a child takes a test. When it's time to take the test to see if you've learned anything, the teachers are silent. Just a little bit of food for thought there is basically what I'm being given. Now, again, you have, we're going to and do astrology now. This is March 19th through the 26th again. Sun is moving into Aries, as well as we have the spring equinox on the 20th. This is Tuesday. Again, this speaks to a coming into alignment. Alignment does have to deal with what is out of the line of aligning basically so we're speaking of where that middle ground that balance and and whatnot is out of balance so we can put it into proper balance which means we do have to deal with the shadow prior to getting in balance so the healing can be made so these are coming up but it's going to be like i said last week it's it's you need if if you can even go back on my website if you've never heard the story before i always say this is the time where you need to work at being that bee, tar bee charmer energy. This is a bee charmer is the one who can go in and take the honey from the hive who doesn't have to wear the outfit to keep them protected. I'm not telling you to go out and try this, but I'm saying it takes a special kind of oh, and peace within themselves to be able to do such a thing without being stung by the bees. This is the time of where you need to find your inner peace as you're working through this energy so that you can have that bee charmer energy and be untouchable in a positive way so it helps your manifestation, it helps your higher frequencies and your vibrational energies come up. Now, you have Mercury going retrograde in Aries on the 22nd. Also, that's the day that I always put out for the global healing for um, Nobody Suffers Alone anymore. You can check my website for that because it's an all-day event, always on the 22nd of every month. But Mercury retrograde takes place on the 22nd in Aries. Now, understand this. The Sun and Venus is in Aries. And while it's in retrograde, the Sun is going to come back past Venus and come back past the Sun and then start coming back forward again. But do not underestimate Uranus's power. Uranus is in Aries and Uranus is the whole reason that this retrograde is going to be powerful because Uranus is about to move in the next two months. It will be moving out of Aries and into Taurus and it will not be back to Aries for like 65 years. Most of you will not be alive when it returns. This is the last time Uranus can teach these lessons. So it is going to be seriously energizing that retrograde that Mercury is going through. So that inner communication right now is highly important because it's going to be filling it with your independence, your individuality, your uniqueness, your freedom. How you can create it in the universal first house of Aries and have the fire and the ability to want to and passion to go out and actually start to make it so. But it's going to be showing you where it hasn't worked in the past versus what you need to know, the fuel and the fire you need to know to make it go into the future. And retrograde is all about rebirth, renewal, regeneration. It is also about redoing. Okay, and spirit is saying, depending on the situation, redoing is not necessarily what you want to do. It may be reevaluating so that you can do it in the proper way this time. But if you redo it the same way, there's a reason it didn't work before, basically. And that's a three week 
process that Mercury retrograde will be going through. And I promise you that you that Uranus energy is going to be fueling it with Venus's sensitivity and the sun's core energy of who and what you are and how you can bring that uniqueness, your individuality, your freedom, your independence forward and start to actually make it come into proper light to work for you and take you in the direction you want in the high vibrational way. But it's going to first show you where it hasn't worked in the past. This is a very powerful one because these two aren't going to get together again at least for 65 years to have this same kind of energy come at you. Now, with that being said, on the 20, 20th, on the solstice, not the solstice, on the equinox, the 21st, the 22nd, and the 24th, you have shifting energies going on in astrology in general. Now, the astrology pretty much looks the same, but I'm warning you, it's there. On the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, and then the 24th, you are having shifting energies. So sensitives, like I said, this is that time to start walking in the bee charmer shoes, okay? It's a positive change, but you might need to think that way through as you're moving forward, as well as remembering, like I said, manifestation is not of good behavior. It doesn't work that way. It has to do with your vibrational frequency and being honest with yourself within your now. And remembering your now may view your third dimensional self and the world, but that's just a dimension. It's not the full truth. Okay, now we have Aries. Like I said, everything's coming out of Aries or going to Aries. Basically, Aries is your first universal house of fire. It is where your passion, your aggression, your action first takes place, basically. But Aries can burn out very easily if it gets bored. Okay, Mercury is there. Venus is there in this energy. And it is speaking to Mars in the 10th house of Capricorn in a positive way. This is a trine. So that is more fire, more aggression, more action, more passion being given from the outer community, basically, because this is the 10th house universally speaks to us of our goals within our careers, but we are speaking of a universal level. So this is our outer worlds speaking to our inner worlds of that core energy, that first house giving it the passion, the action, the aggression, but also giving it the warrior power behind it. Now, you also have it trining the North Node in another fire energy all week. I mean, in a fire energy all week. That was, when it hits Capricorn, it's speaking to that Earth energy that I was speaking about. But you have Aries and Leo, which are fire on fire, speaking to you because of the node is bringing in what you need to know in order to move forward in a positive way in order for you to do it. And the node is in Leo right now speaking to us of that creative energy that we need and how we need to make it work for us. But the node also speaks to us of service. So it's not just service to yourself, but it's service to yourself in a way so that you can eventually be helpful to others. Remember, Leo the lion is the king of the jungle for a reason. He's not just responsible for himself. He's responsible for his kingdom as well. And that takes a very big part in it. But the lion also enjoys to lay in the sun. The lion also enjoys, you know, to to be creative and, and have fun and have that relaxation. So you've got to find that balance of where service to yourself and service outwardly can be created in that core energy as well as in that outer energy of your goals, your careers, your outer community. These are all trines right now. So that is a positive energy working for you. But you also have... Mercury, Venus, and Uranus. Remember, also you're dealing with shadow because Mercury is going to go retrograde in the middle of the week. So it's going to go from shadow to self-centered. Okay? Because, sorry, every one of us get a little self-centered when Mercury's in retrograde. Why? It's not our fault. Mercury is communication. Now, talking to you yourself. So you can't help but to get caught up in your own stuff. Period. 
It's not that we do it because we're self-centered and we don't care about others. It's Mercury's talking to us. You can't help it. For three weeks, you happen to get a little self-centered. And Mercury and Venus and Uranus are also speaking to that Capricorn energy. But they are speaking directly <coughs> with Lilith, Mars, Saturn, and Pluto. So that universal energy, like I said, of your independence, your individuality, your uniqueness, your freedom, your liberty. I mean, be, you know, being able to be exactly who and what you want to be, stand tall in your shoes and your power and create yourself the way you want to is speaking with that Mercury communication, but it's also speaking to Venus about what it is that makes you comfortable and why or what doesn't make you comfortable and why. And the sun is coming towards this, but it is speaking with Lilith, which is, you can't make me do anything I don't want to do, period. Okay? It's speaking with Mars, which is your ruler of the warrior. It's the warrior system. It's your SWAT team. It's your inner def defense. But it is also your aggression, your passion, your fire. And this is also in that outer community. So you're going to be a little defensive, period. Um... And you want to, like I said, this is where that deer energy comes in. You want to make sure that you're doing it in, in a strong, soft, gentle way, but still with strength and stability. Stability has to be there right now um, because it's speaking to Saturn and Pluto. And Saturn is all about your rules, your rules, your walls, and your boundaries. And why are they there? Are they there for the right reasons? And if not, why are they still there? It's time to change those rules, walls, and boundaries. And Pluto is pushing on that outer community energy, talking to this core energy, because like I said, Uranus is going to be magnifying that. I don't care if it's on the other side of the sign. And it's going to be magnifying it before it makes this shift of what it is that is not working within your rules, your walls, and your boundaries. And Pluto is going to be asking you, why? Is it dead to you? Is it no more in service to you? You know, death, decay, and destruction for rebirth, renewal, and regeneration. That is the beginning of the universal first house, giving you the blessing of Pluto saying, shed what isn't part of what you need anymore. Let the dead to the dead and let it go so that the renewal, rebirth, and regeneration can happen. It's time for those changes to happen, basically. Now, you also have um, Capricorn itself. Pluto and Lilith is going to be speaking with Jupiter in a square energy. Because this is not going to be comfortable. Jupiter is going to be asking Lilith, who is, you can't make me do anything I damn well don't want to do. And Jupiter is going to be asking them within your relationships and what your relationships are responsible for in the outer communities. It's going to be asking you to be mature. Basically, to be mature here because Jupiter is the higher abundance. It is the higher knowledge, but it is the magnet and it is speaking to Lilith about what it does not, what Lilith doesn't want to do and what it is Lilith needs to do or needs to stop doing basically so that Pluto can make those changes Jupiter is going to be magnifying that energy which is going to be uncomfortable but it's important because Jupiter's trying to put that water G that water energy from Scorpio over there to help make that rebirthing possible. Now, uh, Capricorn, with it, which is Lilith, Mars, Pluto, and Jupiter, but mainly Saturn, is also going to be talking with Juno and Neptune in that 12th house, which is where the, which is where the denials and the healing come forward, basically, for the end of the cycle to end so a new cycle can begin. And Juno is asking for the sacrifice and the commitment that is needed to make it so. To let it go. So that Neptune can create the proper magic in a new positive, healthy, healing way instead of recreating 
denial magic that will just start a new cycle. Now you also have Pisces has the sun as it moves out in the beginning of the week and then into Aries. But it, the sun, and Chiron are going to be speaking with Jupiter all week in a trine. And that is going to be the sun and Chiron. The wounded healer is trying to help you heal that core, help you heal what it is that does not shine so that the shine can happen and is bringing it into those relationships and what it is those relationships are responsible for within our lives and how it is that we can bring new fertility to it and magnify it and make it grow in positive ways. But Jupiter also is speaking with that higher knowledge of what Chiron needs to hear to make the sun's healing happen within your life for those core energies as we start that universal first house again with Uranus getting ready to move. It is also going to be squaring Vista though. It is going to be getting into your soul fire, your home and your hearth of what it is your higher self is trying to teach you. And you may not want to hear necessarily what your higher self is trying to speak to you about. And that has to do about that shadow energy right before Mercury goes retrograde. Okay? I'm warning you that's coming in. Also, near the end of the week, I just very much see that you need to keep an eye on that moon energy as it goes into Gemini. Because the moon is going to be speaking directly with the sun, the moon, Jupiter, which is going to be coming to a full circle to Saturn and those rules those boundaries, those walls, and are they there for the right reasons? If so, great. If not, why? And why aren't we changing them? Which is your emotional self, your intuitive self. In Gemini, which is seeing both sides of the spectrum, honestly, whether you want to or not, which also is going to talk about emotional energy and mood swings. And it's speaking to the sun of your core. It's also speaking to Jupiter, your higher self, the abundance, the knowledge, the magnification that is there to make it break, become knowledgeable. And it is in Scorpio where fertility and rebirthing is taking place as well as that water. So it's going to be bringing up some energies that are uncomfortable for this full circle to happen because they're targeting your Saturn, which is your rules, your boundaries, and your walls. I love you. See you next week. I hope that you have a good week. Just remember, dear energy, you can't make anybody do anything. It's about gentle strength and stability. I love you. Bye.